Hey, hey, you made it. Welcome, my darling true crime angels, to True Crime Tales with Trisha. How are you doing tonight? And let's see if we can get a, a load of that one. There he is. Again, you know, a Texas heat has really gotten to Scrappy Joe, and he doesn't play much at night. So uh, I'll try and keep him inside one day and calm down so we can get him playing again at night because that's fun. I love it when he plays. But he's tired and he just wants to be fed even more. It's amazing. Anyway, I hope everybody is doing well. Uh, at the end of our true crime tale, uh, we will talk about 9-11 and we'll also talk about things that you want to talk about. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, da, da, da. All righty. Let me just check my text messages very quickly. See if I have anything. Oh, hold on, guys. Sorry. Got a teenage issue here. Okay, there we go. Anyway, um, sorry. And I have to do this thing. This is my new sling. Since my other one ended up in the dog and cat water, I don't know how that happened. I just don't. Is the uh, lighting okay here? Because I try and make it a little more, uh, oh, I don't know, not as bright on True Crime Story Night. So let's see what you're all saying. <laughs> this is going to go well, I can tell. Please, everybody, be patient with me. Be, ouch, be patient. Let's see. Yes, better. it's better it's in the water than dog and cat pee. That's right. Uh, no, Charlie Hunt, I'm going to try and get my eye drops next week. But, uh, okay, so the lighting looks okay. I take it. All righty. All righty. Well, I don't know. I don't know how this is supposed to go on. This is how I was instructed how it would go on. Okay, because it's got a little padding thing here for my neck. So that's how I was told. And then people tell me it goes on another way and then I put it on that way and then one goes, no, it goes on the other way. And I just want to give up. So, and I shouldn't be using it, but I'm going to have to tonight if I'm going to get through this. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Strap on your elbow should go over your shoulder. Oh, I see what you're saying. Ugh. Okay, I'll try that later. I see. I get it now. Thank you, Judy. Thank you so much. Okay, everybody. I hope you are ready for Trisha's True Crime Tales. Okay. Tonight, it's going to be a horrific story. So, I need to do a trigger warning. I'm serious. We're going to be talking about all kinds of child abuse, everything you could imagine. We're going to be talking about murder, murdered children. So if these are things that you can't handle, please click off now. And of course, something else very horrific that's going to happen, and that is my attempt at a British accent. Just have to live with it, people. So I hope you're in your jammies. I hope you have your favorite adult beverage, and you are ready for a very horrible tale that proves what we've been talking about all along. And that is kids aren't born bad. They're made. And this child didn't have a chance. In 1968, this was in England, Martin Brown's mother was inside her home and Martin Brown's little body had been found the day before. And of course, she was very upset. And she hears a knock at the door, and it's Mary Bell, now one of the kids in the neighborhood. And Mary Bell says, 
hello, I'd like to see Martin, please. And she said, oh, pet, Martin is dead. I'm sorry. And she lights up and goes, I know. I want to see him in his coffin. Her name was Mary Bell. And on that day, she was 11 years old. This takes place in a town called Newcastle on Tyne. And uh, now, kind of fast forward to the end here. Mary Bell was end, ended up convicted of killing two of her classmates, or not two of her classmates, two of her uh, kids in her neighborhood, young boys, three years old. And she was convicted as an adult at 11. And they released her at 23. And get this, she got a new identity. And she got protection from the press for the rest of her life. Even if the press finds out who she is, they are not supposed to say anything by law. She got protection for herself, for her daughter. Yeah, she had a kid. And for her granddaughter. Okay, but there was a London tabloid that captured some pictures of Mary Bell as an older adult woman. And we'll put those up here in just a little bit, okay? In fact, right now, I'm going to share the screen. We're going to take a look at Mary Bell. and wait until you see this darling, cute little girl, okay? And these pictures were taken uh, at the time of her age. So let's see here. Uh, which one is it from the archive? Okay, it is this one. Let's see here. Okay, you see there's a whole, I did a Google search and I wanted to just do a whole bunch of uh, pictures, but that's Mary Bell. And look at this one right here where my doodad is going over it. Look at that little sweet face. Now, supposedly these are some older pictures of her. You know, I can't verify them because she wasn't supposed to have her picture taken at all. Okay. So. Let's see here. That's not what I wanted. Where'd it go? It left me. That's what I wanted. There we go. Okay, so Newcastle on Tyne. And this was a town that was very bleak. Uh, I went to England several times growing up because my brother, my mother was raised in London. And I remember when I first went to one a town just like this, it might have been uh, Newcastle on time for all I know to visit a relative and I was maybe nine ten and I'll never forget I saw kids uh, that like barely had clothes on no shoes and they asked us for money for food when they heard us outside talking because we were Americans I was shocked I was scared I'd never seen anything like that People don't live like that. You know, I had a nice clean home and breakfast, lunch and dinner and parents that loved me. And it was so hard for my little brain to try and wrap around what that was like. But Mary Bell and the people in her neighborhood, it was really tough, but it was especially tough for Mary Bell. Okay. Um, Mary Bell said she hurt deeply and that's why she wanted to hurt others because she couldn't feel hurt unless it was something really awful, really bad. She'd shut down that much. And so that's why she wanted to see other people hurt because it made her feel something. There is a story that Mary Bell fell out of a window as a very, very young child and that there was frontal lobe damage. Now, that actually makes the most sense here, because even though Mary Bell had a horrific childhood from the very beginning, you can still control your urges, and that's your frontal lobe. Your frontal lobe is what stops you from acting on your anger or from saying something embarrassing. It just, that's, that's, your, that's your conscience right here, and if these areas are damaged, it can be really horrific. And the way Mary Bell acted, it sounds like there is no doubt her frontal lobes were damaged. It could have been very easily damaged in a fall. 
Supposedly, there are some neighbors that said they saw her mother, Betty, push her out. Her mother, Betty, what a charmer. But I almost can't blame her because she grew up in a horrific childhood home, but she could have made different choices. She was 16 when she had Mary Bell. And when the nurse handed Mary Bell to her, cute little baby, I mean, everybody, if you're a mom and given birth, and that minute you're handed that baby and that love just comes pouring out. I mean, I could get emotional and start bawling thinking about it now. Not Mary Bell's mother, Betty, no. She hissed at the nurse and said, get that thing away from me. I didn't do that with a British accent because I couldn't do anger and British at the same time. So yeah, Mary Bell was in big trouble because first of all, her mother was a prostitute, but she was a very specialized prostitute. She was a dominatrix and she uh, also specialized in giving pain to clients. And she gave a lot of pain to Mary Bell. There is no doubt that Mary Bell was sexually abused. Uh, they have said that her mother had offered her up to her client, to her Johns, to her clients. Uh, they say that she had all kinds of beatings growing up. But remember, this is a very depressed area. And I pretty much, unless it was murder, they weren't going to do anything. It's different now. Thank God. But back then, not so much. Uh, in fact, at one time, uh, the police asked her, you know, what did you do with your, when you brought men home with Mary Bell there? And she goes, oh, oh, I, I, I hid the whips and chains. I hid them, you know, so Mary Bell could never see them. And, and then when a client, I brought a client home, you know, we made Mary Bell was in another room. Like that was give her mother of the year. When Mary Bell was around, she hid the whips and chains. She also abused her horribly. Now, as a toddler, especially a toddler that is being abused, you're going to have accidents. And I guess she was a chronic bedwetter. Not unexpected at all. But uh, Betty's way of handling that. Now, remember, she was a toddler, little kid, probably should have been in diapers, but mom didn't have time for it. She would grab her by the hair, take her face and just grind it into the urine on the bed. I doubt they had sheets. She didn't have much food. Her mom's bringing home men. There was a guy that, that was there regularly that people said was her father, but uh, her mother made Mary Bell call this guy uncle because if it was her father, then she'd stop getting benefits from the, um, the, the state. So yeah, teaching her to lie right off the bat. Isn't that lovely? Now, Mary Bell also had a friend named Norma Bell. Really, truly no relation. And let's get this out of the way. Norma was acquitted of all charges. It was Mary Bell that did everything. Okay. So the other part of this is mom didn't really didn't want Mary Bell. And so many a time she would toss Mary Bell off to relatives, to neighbors. She even asked a woman she met like in the street if she could take her for a while. She didn't care who took her. So God knows how many people abuse that poor child. And I do, when you read in depth on Mary Bell, it's hard not to conclude that she didn't have severe frontal lobe damage because she would do things like at a young age in grade school, she'd try and strangle a kid, boys and girls. And they'd pull her off and they'd say, Mary Bell, why are you doing this? And she'd say, well, I want to see what it feels like to kill somebody. And in her brain damaged, abused mind, it's what she wanted. So she went after what she wanted. What was wrong with that? That's literally how she acted. Uh, Mary and Norma broke into uh, a classroom that had the little toddlers in it. And they wrote these weird, creepy notes. And they took turns writing a word to help disguise their handwriting. Now, they're 10 and 11 years old. They're thinking like that. This is before 
you know, all the crime shows and everything. And she was that diabolical that she, they'd write these weird notes like, um, oh gosh, I, I think one of them said, I kill so I can come back again or, and we're going to come back and kill you. Notes like that, just very, very creepy. Uh, they were caught. They did get into trouble. Hi, baby. Sorry, Boo. I, I hope I'm not interfering with anything with you. I do have notes here I'd kind of like to look at. But hey, if you're comfortable on them, we'll keep you there, right? We've got to, got to keep Boo comfortable. That's all there is to it. So anyway. Things just started going, becoming more and more violent with Mary Bell. Now, the day before her 11th birthday, so she was 10, she and her friend Norma lured Martin Brown to come to an abandoned house. And uh, she at some point said that, uh, I'm going to massage your throat because you have a sore throat. I'm going to massage it. She would strangle them. But before she strangled them, she would stab them all over the place and would stab their their private parts. Now, this is a 10-year-old, guys, a 10-year-old stabbing the private parts of a small male child. There is so much wrong with this and so much that can be deduced from this. She mutilated their, their genitals, basically. And then she would end up strangling them. She put one of her little hands around their little throat and the other hand she would use to close the nostrils and mouth and then strangle him. She did things like she uh, brought Martin Brown's sister to see the body because a, a lot of people discovered the body and then there was a big crowd waiting for the police. And uh, some kids discovered it, actually. And then they ran and told some construction workers. And they came and looked at the body in this abandoned house. And they called the police. Well, in the meantime, Mary Bell had uh, run into Martin's sister. And she took Martin's sister to see the body. And she wanted to see her reaction. You know, like her heart sped up. And she was all excited because she knew she was going to be devastated and crying. And that's what Mary Bell wanted. She wanted to see that suffering. And it worked. And then she would do things like, uh, in addition to knocking on his mother's door, she would also visit his aunt and say, you know, do you know Martin's dead? She'd say, yes, I do, pet. Do you miss him? Did you cry? You know, just weird questions like that. And uh, the aunt was totally creeped out by her. Uh, oh, and that's one thing. I forgot because I couldn't look at my notes. Martin's mother said she had a very, very creepy smile when she asked to see Martin in his coffin. It was in the month of July that there was another boy. I believe his name was Brian Howe. And it was the same thing. Now, Norma Bell was with her as well. But like I said, later she was acquitted. So they lure Brian Howe out. He's a little boy, three years old, says, got a sore throat. I'm going to massage your neck. Ended up uh, murdering him. And because Mary couldn't keep her mouth shut and she was telling people, I've killed, I've killed. And it, anyway, it got back that they were the ones last seen with him. Plus, there were fibers from Mary's sweater on both victims and Norma's, uh, anything of Norma's at the time for what testing they had, they didn't find anything of Norma's there. So uh, even though she was tried, she was not convicted. Norma was, I think, a couple of years older than Mary Bell. Thank you, Boo. Oh, I'm, thank, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to move my notes out from under you. That was so cruel of me. Anyway, uh, and that's how they came to deduce that Mary Bell and her friend Norma Bell, at least Mary Bell, was the killer. You know, they were the last ones to be seen with Martin, the last ones to be seen with Brian. And then 
Mary Bell just couldn't keep her mouth shut. She loved to be the center of attention. And when she said shocking things like that, everybody stopped and listened. But I want you to keep in mind that if true, she had a head injury, which I believe absolutely. Add to that the most horrific abuse possible. Because even if you're a day old baby, you can feel reject rejection. And what happens is your little one day old baby mind doesn't know what's going on. All you know is you want food and comfort and you're probably not getting both in Mary or either in Mary Bell's case. And so your little one day old mind can't handle it. And so you go through all these horrible mental gymnastics trying to figure it out. You can't even figure out what you are yet, but you know, you're being rejected and that messes with you big time. They've proven it. It's a fact. So they tried her. And of course, she was called the bad seed by the press. Um, they had many a doctor up there talking about what a psychopath this child was, how dangerous it would be to have her out on the street ever again. And she was tried as an adult. But she was only kept in prison until she was 23. Uh, I, 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 I'm not sure if that was as long as they could keep a juvenile, even though she was tried as an adult, or if they felt she was cured because she did do a lot in prison. She got involved in things and, you know, probably for the first time in her life, probably had some sort of camaraderie in prison, but I'm sure she also had many major problems as well. You don't turn into a real super nice person when you go to prison. Anyway, the, um, the court, her, her majesty's will, uh, let her out at 23 and she was so harassed by the media that she was able to go to the high court is what they call it. She was able to go to the high court and get a proclamation that nobody could, uh, reveal where she lived. She was given a new name and they you know, helped her move and everything, okay? She was given a new name and she, hold on one second. And she was given this, uh, let me share this one. Here supposedly is a picture of Mary Bell and she looks just exactly like a grown up version. Same haircut, same round face, really, really nice looking young lady. So let me um, get this here. You can see these pictures and I'll take a look at my notes really quick here and see if, uh, oh yeah, she did escape from prison. Maybe that's what these pictures are from. She did escape from prison in 1977, but they brought her back. So this is a picture of her. Maybe this is when she was uh, 1977. She would have been 18. So maybe that's what this is from, 18 or 19. You know, I mean, she looks just like a little, she looks like a, an adult version of herself, but that's the oldest picture that I could find of her. So let me just take my notes really quickly. And then we're going to give you an update from the last edition of True Crime Tales with Trisha. So let me just check out here. Oh, oh yes. Forgot to mention this, but you probably would figure it out yourself. Uh, Mary Bell liked to kill small animals from a very, very, very early age. And she would have been a serial killer had she killed one more child, which she was on the way to doing. She was 11, 11, 11. Okay. And that, yeah. She, actually, you know what she was convicted of? It wasn't murder. She was convicted of manslaughter based on diminished capacity because of the brain injury and the abuse. Rather than find her first degree murder charge or second degree murder, they found her uh, guilty of manslaughter because of her diminished capacity. So I would really like to know what happened to her. You know, the thing is, I don't know if she knows this, but 
you know, she, she could probably make a lot of money, especially in England. I have got a ghost hair or something right here that I can feel, but I can't see. And it's not a cat hair. Anyway, so if I keep doing this all night, that's why. Uh, she could make a ton of money with the tabloids if she wanted. But then again, if she opens that door, I don't think she can close it again. If she, you know, tells people her name or where she's living, or even if she does an interview anonymously, I think that would probably negate the the law that she has on her side. That would be my guess. So there you go. Mary Bell. Mary Flora Bell is her name. Oh, and I want to tell you uh, this book. I Oh, that's what I forgot. Dang it. Never mind. It'll yeah. just have to deal with it. Uh, the name of the book is... Oh, brother. I was going to read you a part of this book, but I already told it to you, but it was read better. They wrote it a lot better than I did. Uh, the name of the book is Mary Flora Bell, The Horrific True Story Behind an Innocent Girl. Serial killer. Yeah. I'll put the link up in the description for the Amazon <sighs> link in case you want to buy the book or uh, just get the ebook. Okay. So pretty crazy stuff. And I, I actually read about her in 1980. I was given this set of books, true crime books from, from England. And they were, it was like a library. It was like 15 of them. And it all had British true crime in it. I just, I memorized them. I read them so much. And that was one of them. I've always remembered that. And if you go on the, on YouTube, you can find all kinds of videos about her. So um, she certainly is an interesting topic, don't you think? Okay. Now, let me get, that's what I meant to do. Gosh darn it. Boo, you made me forget. Oh, now this is broken. Great. Hang on, everybody. Hang on, everybody. Personal. There we go. Okay. Now, last week, I told you the story from the Anne Rule book, Bitter Harvest, about Mike Farrar and his wife, Deborah Green. And she was the woman who burned her house down with her kids inside of it. And one did survive. And I said I would try and find out where Michael Farrar is. Well, the latest update. Oh, and by, oh, and she kept trying to poison him with ricin. He had brain damage and heart damage. And it was a miracle he survived. But uh, there is an article from the Cinemaholic. And I'll put this link up in the description as well. And it's all about where is Michael Farrar now? Inspired by the New York Times bestseller, Bitter Harvest, penned by renowned true crime author Anne Rule, Lifetime's A House on Fire is a film that profiles the tale of Deborah Green, an emergency physician turned convicted murderer. Okay, and it goes on and on to talk about that. And uh, let's see, let me get down here. Tell you where he's at now. Uh, despite the impending divorce, Michael Farrar had initially declined to move out of the family home, but after he repeatedly fell ill that summer under mysterious circumstances, he left. And that's when the house burned down. You know, he immediately blamed his wife. They had been arguing that whole day. And, okay, yes, I know we know all of this. Let's see. He is 66 now. He's still working as a cardiologist specialist in Kansas City, Missouri. The University of Cincinnati College of Medicine graduate is a member of the American College of Cardiology and seems to be affiliated with well-known facilities like North Kansas City Hospital and Ray County Memorial Hospital. Uh, it does not give a update, an update on his daughter that was with him. Now, she was the one that was able to escape, even though her mother intended her to die as well. Her mother's still in prison, not going to get out anytime soon. Okay, let me check and see what you're all saying in chat, my darlings, okay? Hang on, yeah. 
Where did it go? Where did it go? Oh, there we go. Oh, Nadia Sarun, I'll definitely do the Moors murders. No question. Is it the Moors? Or no, it's not called the Moors. It's called, oh, Lord. Hi, Terry. Hi, Tamara. Millie Molly, Mrs. T, good to see you. Ocean Angel, hello. Uh, thank you, Becky Sue. Uh, Dizzy Chief, I was trying to clip some hedges over a week ago. I did something to my arm. It hurt like crazy. And uh, I went to the ER and they gave me a shot and a sling and a name that they recommended of an orthopedic dude. And so it feels a lot better. That shot, whatever that was, it was magic. Denise Spaulding, thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much, my dear. I really appreciate that. Hi, Marge West. Uh, Carol Campbell says the Moore murders. Okay. And this would happened in, are you talking about the one where these adults kidnapped children and murdered them and taped? Oh God. Thank you for joining Wendy Grimstead. We do appreciate it. And we do survive on donations. So if you can see yourself to uh, donate something, that would be great. You can do it through Super Chat or you can do it through PayPal or Venmo, which I believe would be, uh, should be pinned at the top of the, ooh, maybe it's not, hold on. Let's see here, where did it go? That's right, Ping. Mary Bell actually did write a book called Cries Unheard, the story of Mary Bell. And that would probably be very interesting to read. So. Thank you. I just pinned the uh, Venmo and PayPal links at the top there. Oh, thank you. This was given to me by Pia Pill. When I met her in uh, driving here to Texas, we met up and she gave, uh, gave us all kinds of snacks and gave the animals snacks and gave me 800 pounds of makeup and a bunch of headbands. She was wonderful. Hey, Love and Coco. Good to see you. Twin Mom 2011, hello, Kimmy 71, Allie Brewer, hi. Love my Charlie Faye, thank you so very much for the super chat. Uh, love my Charlie Faye says, thank you for the awesome story time. You're amazing and beautiful. Thank you. I'm new at this. I, I'm, I'm going to be working at it, so. Hi, Cracklin' Rosie. Lillian G, thank you so much for the $20 donation. I did not see that. Lillian G, you're a sweetheart. Thank you. Really, Millie Molly, uh, Mrs. T. She says, as a child, I wrote to Ian Brady for a history report, and he wrote back. Wasn't he the male part of the Moore murders? I believe. Oh, thank you. Cynthia Berg, love you right back. Hey, yeah, okay. Somebody suggested I do this. We're going to try it tonight. Okay, I want everybody, unless you're driving or operating heavy machinery, perhaps you're doing open heart surgery, if you are able, Stop what you're doing. Put this finger up or this one, one of them, and then scroll and hit the like button. Okay. I'll count to five. One or the uh, thumbs up or the thumbs down. Hit either one. Okay. Either one. 
You ready? Can count to five, okay? One, two, three, three, yeah, <laughs> kidding. Four, five. You ready? That's the noise it makes. Did you hear it? Hit thumbs up, thumbs down. Makes that noise. I don't know why. It's weird, huh? Oh, look at look at his majesty rolling around on his back there going, I need to be served. Okay, people. We need to talk about this. All right. Oh gosh Lord. Gosh Lord. I see I can't even swear properly. There we go. Okay. Twenty years ago today, Sergeant Pepper taught the band to play. That just always pops in my head. It's 20 years ago today, and everybody can remember what they were doing, what happened that day, all of that. Uh, if you want, let me put this in chat. I'll put the link in chat. The link in chat. Oh, come on. Stop doing that, computer. There we go copy the clipboard. I'm doing this with my left hand, so forgive me. Come on. Oh, I've got to use this hand. Sorry. Come on. Post. Paste. There we go. Okay, there is the link. If you would like to click on that and join me in studio, to talk about 9-11, your thoughts. I'd really like to know what people were doing when they heard. Um, I was getting my son ready, he had just turned five. And we saw, we had the TV on, we saw the second, uh, we saw the second plane hit the towers. <clears throat> and I remember telling him, I said, your life and my life has we it's changed forever well you must always remember this day and never forget it and he was going to a montessori school and i took him and they had all the kids sit around in a circle and tried to explain to them what happened they were just the greatest people and will came home that night and he had a, a big uh, a big sketch easel thing with big huge paper on it and draw big pictures and he drew um, a picture of the Twin Towers, and I kept it. I would love to frame it, find it and frame it. Frame it. Kept, it was a picture of the Twin Towers, but instead of a plane crashing into it, the Twin Towers were bent like this, and the plane went through the middle. And then it showed the firemen carrying the people out. Well, it showed the firemen dragging the people out because he couldn't draw. It looked like they were just, you know, bonking him down the stairs. And in his little mind, that's how he handled it. That's what he did. So, okay, we'll go to um, Lillian Gale first, and then Kevin Palmer second. Here we go. How are you doing, my darling? Hi, um, Trish. Don't mind me. I've had a bad couple days. Oh. How's your arm? Oh, it's much better. Much, much better. Thank you. How well, have you been? Just, well, I went and got tested for COVID because I felt so lousy for about a week and I was negative. Thank God. Oh, good. And uh, yeah. So today, you know, I knew exactly where I was when 9-11 hit. I was working in Camden for New Jersey Transit in our control center. Mm -hmm. And we always had a TV on for the news at that time. And when the first plane hit, I said to my coworker, I said, oh, my God. And then the, the next one came around and I said, oh, my God, this is no accident. And she said, oh, well, you don't know that. And I'm like, are you for real? Mm -hmm. And so, well, we all know what happened after that. But today, Tricia, uh the co-pilot of flight 93 mm -hmm. in Shanksville, him and his wife and their new baby lived here in Marlton, New Jersey, oh. where I live around the corner. Um, they have a monument there.
because mm -hmm. he was a resident here. So today I went around, they have a little bench and it's like a big, big boulder with his name on it. Mm -hmm. And I took a flag around there and I um, put the flag there and I was, and then I went to Medford, which is the town uh, above me. And there they have a memorial. Mm -hmm. They had the church bells ringing Aww. and they had a monument with um, the flight 93 twin towers, the first one, the second one, the Pentagon, and they had a piece of one of the towers um, on top of the monument. And I met a young man there who was kneeling down. He was in fireman gear. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, I had my little dog Stevie with me. And I said to him, sir, are you a fireman? And he said, yes, I am, ma'am. I walk every year because my family was in firefighting and I have to do this. And I said, would you mind if I take a picture of you? And I put it on my Facebook. He said, no, he didn't care. And I found myself being so emotional today mm -hmm. because you watch it. And, you know, before 9-11, we were much more respectful, considerate, and, and more passionate. And every year since, it seems like our country and our people have never been the same. No. And I have another thing that's on my mind, and it this has been bugging me to no end, and I'm almost in tears about it. That Dave that talked about you the way he did, I come on your page, and I get nervous when I call in, and I'm trying to keep my emotions down. You're nothing. Oh. You're nothing but respectful. Thank you. You 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 with what you do. All it is is murder, 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 little children. And you try to throw some humor in there. And this doofus, <laughs> whoever he is. No idea who he is. Attacks you personally. I thought it and was I, funny. No, I didn't. You know, he t talks about your covers on your couch. He talks about you. I miss your your dungaree jacket. I had one. <laughs> I, you know, I'm telling you, I thought, who in the hell does this guy think he is? Yeah, Did he was pretty disgusting. He personally, personally said hurtful things to you. He doesn't walk in your shoes. He doesn't know where you've been or what's happened to you. Just like you don't know about me. Right. I've been through hell in my life. And so have you, and so has other people. And you're that shallow dude to talk about your jacket. You look like like a bag lady. Your your house has he been in your home? No, I took offense to that, and I could. I was almost crying over it because Aww. he had no right to talk about you like that. If he what? doesn't like the way you dress, if he doesn't like the way you, what cushions you have on your couch, then watch another channel, you fool. Well, exactly. And you know what? That really helps my heart that you get so upset. You, you shouldn't because I've dealt with people like this. I've been, like I said, been in radio since 1979. And listen, when they can't see you and then they meet you and they go, oh, you don't look like you sound. You know, I'm so used to people being rude. It doesn't even bother me. That's why I laughed because it was so over the top. Room. Oh, beyond I over the believe it, you know, push beyond over the top. And you know what? Look, I, I understand you people that do this. Put yourself out there for, to, to to keep these cases in the forefront. A and you got to get a guy like that that has no. That's what I mean. Since nine eleven. There's no compassion. I'm crying now. I'm sorry to oh, say. Don't cry, honey. It's okay. But no, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's out and out wrong. And well, I hope he never turns onto your channel again. Well, I'll find him and and I'll do what's right. I'll beat the crap out of him, okay? Listen, <laughs> Trisha, 
I come on and I get nervous and I yak, yak, Not yak. Nervous. I interrupt every gosh darn five no, minutes. And uh, I got news for you. In my younger years, I, I'm only five foot two, but I drove a bus in the early days with no for transit, not a school bus, no power steering, stick shift. And I'll tell you what, I could kick a building down with my left leg. Wow. I was strong and I wasn't too afraid of much. Now, you know, I'm closer to 70. Different. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm closer to 72 than I am 71. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, I still would take a crack at him. <laughs> You know what? That is just, I, I mean, this is going to sound so strange, but I can't tell you how good that makes me feel because, uh, you know, it's nice to know that people will stick up for you. It really is. So thank you. But I swear to you, it did not hurt me. It made me, like I said, it made me laugh. It's like when somebody's so angry over something so stupid, I, it just cracked me up. I'm like, my God, calm down, buddy. You know, it's a, it's a YouTube channel you can watch for free. Get over you know, it. Trish, you know, Trish, I was taught it's what's in our heart. It's not what we wear. It's not how we look. You've got gorgeous hair. You're a pretty woman. And he has no right because he doesn't know what you've been through. Well, nobody knows what I've been through unless you ask me someday and I'll tell you. But guess what? It's not right. And I didn't like it. And it's been bugging me for days. Oh, well, and, please, and please don't let it so, bug you, please. OK, get uh, do something to make yourself happy if you can do something well, good for yourself. Well, you know what? I, I will. But I've been emotional today and I didn't like what he said about you. It wasn't right. And uh, I hate to be his wife, God forbid. Can so listen, I know you got Kevin waiting. Yes. You've been I, nothing but respectful and patient. Oh. Because like I said, I interrupt and I try to not to do that. Lillian, but you're you, great. You're one of our favorite callers. Don't ever put yourself down. You are wonderful. I, Don't change, babe. Don't change. Well, I'll try. Well, my friend, my girlfriend's over here saying, okay, calm down, calm down. <laughs> yes, calm down. It's okay. And we love you. And this is a, I, I hope you will just always continue coming here and coming on because we love hearing from you, Lillian. We really, really do. Well, thank you. And you, you don't let people like him because that ever tear you down like Never. that. Never. Never. Won't and happen. I will laugh at them. Because I know what it feels like, Tricia. I know oh. what it feels like. And that's why it upset me so much. I know. Don't let it upset you, my dear. Okay. We love you. So you take care and I love you, you too. too. Okay. Thanks bye -bye. for checking in. Bye-bye. Hold on one second here. I, don't you just love that woman? I mean, how nice. You know, I, uh, I, I don't have, I don't have people. I shouldn't say I don't have people. I do. But before all of this YouTube and web sleuths, you know, growing up, my brother did stick up for me. He did um, try and beat up Eddie. I wasn't say Eddie Haskell. That wasn't his name, but he looked like Eddie Haskell. And he was bugging me, like harassing me. And he would always like threaten me because he, this guy, this is third grade. I got to tell you this story. Third grade. This kid should have been in fifth grade. Okay. It's held back. And this was before I knew anything about child abuse and, you know, all that. I just thought he was a big, dumb jerk. And he'd always get mad at me and my girlfriend because we wouldn't give him any gum during recess. And he'd like threaten us. So one day we uh, went to my house. We got a stick of um, juicy fruit and we put like, uh, oh, I don't know, red pepper, cinnamon, you know, garlic paste, every horrible thing mixed together that we could. Hey, Eddie, we've got gum. For you come on over and he you know runs over like a rabid dog we gave him the gun gum and he's like chewing it all happy and then he goes i'll kill you i'll kill you you know got all mad at us so i told my brother so my brother followed him home one day my brother was uh four years older than me and basically said if you don't leave my sister alone i will kill you and he did and you know that 
That was wonderful. But uh, yeah. So thank you, Lily and Gail. Thank you. We love you. And don't be nervous and you don't interrupt and you are wonderful. Okay. Speaking of wonderful, it is Mr. Wonderful, everybody. It's Kevin Palmer. How are you? Uh, I'm doing all right. I'm doing Whoop, you muted yourself. Uh, no, I, no, I, I, no, I didn't. Yeah. I, I did not mute myself. No, you didn't. I'm sorry, you didn't. So, <laughs> yeah, just like there's no mail. Anyway. No. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, first off, let's give Lillian a big thumbs up in the chat. Yes. We love Lillian. She did an awesome job. Oh, to, to, to the 500 plus people, people that are in the chat, awesome job. Um, she did. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, 9 11. I was 17 years old. I was in. I was in the. Uh, I was in the 11th grade, and I was in French school. So uh, I did. I said exactly the same thing as Lillian said, but I said it in French. I said "c'est pas un accident." I said that's not an accident. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I still. I still. I still remember after the second tower was struck. Uh, I think it was the our vice principal Sylvain Roy. He actually brought a. You know, when they used to have televisions on these carts with a VCR on it, you remember that back in the day? Oh, yeah, they'd wheel them in from the audiovisual yeah. room, yes. Well, he actually brought one out into the into the hallway. Now, this is a little small town high school up in Iroquois Falls, Ontario, Canada, this French high school, and, and we were watching it live. We were watching on CTV News what was going on. And, uh, and we knew that the, even us high school kids knew that our world has just changed changed dramatically yes absolutely and it has since then that's oh, amazing that even a high school kid could realize immediately that it wasn't an accident so do you speak fluent french i'm totally bilingual i speak both french and english equally really so if i need a french interpreter i can contact you i'm i'm not a licensed interpreter but i can get my license like that Okay, so not that I have any idea why I'd ever need a French interpreter. It's just one of those things I like to have in my back pocket. <laughs> well, if, if ever you wanted to broadcast a show in Quebec or in France, because I can speak with a Parisian accent too, you know. Oh, cool. I'm your, I'm your, I'm, I'm your guy. But anyway, okay, you know, great. But, you know, you, we're talking about true crime today, and I, and I have a true crime story that I have to admit I was the culprit, I must admit. Oh, my God. You're the criminal. I got to hear this. Uh, uh, it's in uh, 2007 before I moved here to North Bay, um, and it, it's difficult to talk about. I forgot to change the sticker on my license plate. You bastard! You son of a gun! I got fined 120 dollars Canadian, which is about maybe 97 dollars American. Wow! Really? They That's didn't my give you a chance. They didn't give you like a warning ticket. <laughs> That's my criminal history. <laughs> <laughs> It's amazing that, you know, that they would get that upset. So you didn't get a warning ticket or anything? How how much no. was it expired? <laughs> no, no, they're just, she just, the cop, she just gave me a ticket. I was actually working, working delivery, uh, my delivery job on top, of, on top of it. So I actually, I actually had to lose pay to go pay that ticket mm -hmm. until I got my, my sticker updated. <laughs> wow. Well, you are a criminal. I'm glad you admitted your criminal history. Have you been reformed, Kevin? One hundred percent. I've never, I've never missed uh, changing my sticker ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Stay that way, young man. Stay out of trouble. Make something of yourself. Oh, but, Kevin, but the, the stay out of trouble. I've been kicking hornets' nests ever since. And trust me, I've, I've recently kicked another one. And uh, we'll see what we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> Good. I, we want to hear all about it. Listen. Uh, Take care. You and Lillian are in our top callers. Thank you so much. And your enthusiasm is greatly appreciated. And oh. so is your loyalty. You're just a great and, guy to come in here every and, night and participate. And has Lilith been mouthing off again? Or, is, is, you know, remember the, a couple of nights yes. ago, Lilith was really. Oh, without question. It's nonstop. She was singing us a song. <laughs> she what? She was singing us a song for some oh, reason. <laughs> she was. She was going nuts because my outdoor cat, OC, which stands for, oh crap, another cat that adopted me and forced me to feed her, was sitting on the outside of the window seal and Lilith was on the inside and they both were going at it. And I'm going to, because I think this winter in Texas is going to be cold, I'm eventually going to try and bring her in and she's just going to be one of my cats and I have to let my landlady know I need another pet deposit. But I was, I was given no choice. 
um, like I said, she literally would not let me get in the car until I fed her. And I went, you know, I admire that, uh, that persistence in a cat. <laughs> Kevin, thank you, my darling. We will talk to you again uh, on, hopefully you'll come back on, uh, on Monday. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll be there. Be, be, be forewarned. I will be there. Good. Everybody be warned. Kevin will be here. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Thank you, darling. Bye bye. Okay. I do have one other nine 11 story and it's, it's, it's sad as they all are. Um, and I've told part of this story before, but there is an addendum to the end. Uh, my now ex-husband owns his own plumbing co company and has since practically I've known him. And he has a worker named Chris. And Chris was such a good, loyal worker. I, what happened was he would get people in there and train them. He was a new construction plumber and it was always for high-end housing in Park City. So it, you know, waterfalls coming over mountains inside the house, that type of thing. And you train people and then they go start their own business. So um, as I've told him many a time, uh, I saved his business, although he doesn't believe me, because I said the thing you need to do is you need to get the best insurance policy for people, the health insurance, the very best. And he said, find me something. So I called up this guy and I said, I want the best, the most expensive employee insurance. I want the one with hardly any paperwork or no paperwork. And we got a great, a great deal. Of course, I'm not on it now which I was, but anyway, then he started getting employees that stayed a long time. And one of them, the most loyal was a man named Chris. And Chris got married, spending his honeymoon in Hawaii when 9-11 happened. And his sister worked in building number two. She worked at Fidelity, was that, I think that was the name of the company. And she called her mom and she said, don't worry, mom. We're getting out and, you know, I'm going to be fine. And then it was, I think building two was the first one that collapsed. They didn't find anything of her. Even the body parts that they tested for DNA, nothing. You know what they found? In perfect condition, her driver's license. Isn't that odd? Well, so Chris got actually stuck in Hawaii, he and his wife, for like 10 days. And then he came home and uh, he told us, he said, I'm not going to have kids. He said, because if, especially if I have two of them, then what if a sibling dies and then the other siblings all alone? I mean, it devastated him. And oh my God, can you imagine a parent on 9-11 knowing their child is in one of those buildings or in one of those planes or at the Pentagon? I'm not talking about little kids. I'm talking about adults. I can't imagine. And Chris's parents were the greatest people. They were from uh, Long Island and they were Long Island. I love them. Well, Chris's mom and dad, they, they I, I don't want to say they bounced back. They never did really, but they did attempt to continue with a good life. Uh, Chris did end up having two kids, darling darling kids, great kids, and uh, fun kids. You just got to know Chris, fun guy. And then his father died. Now, that's sad, you know, but expect it. Chris was maybe 51, 52, got cancer. And he died last June. He has a 12-year-old and a 10-year-old. His mother is still alive. Can you imagine your husband, first your daughter in 9-11, your husband, and then your son? I can't, that pain, I can't even imagine. I am just grateful that Chris did have two kids, so his mom has those grandchildren, you know, so. Oh, Danny B. Hey, let's bring Danny B on. This is cool. Danny B, demute yourself, my darling. There you are. Danny B, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. I can hear you. It sounds good. What's going on? Where were you, 9 11? Is that what you called? Or yes. Yes. Talk to me. Talk to me. What happened? 
Okay. Um, so I was a freshman in high school. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we were all in class and uh, the period had actually just started. And um, like, it was just kind of weird. Uh, the teachers all went out into the hallway and were like gossiping and talking. And uh, a announcement came on telling for all the teachers, teachers to turn on the TV. And um, we were like, okay, what's going on? And they were showing the news and the towers and mm -hmm. everything that was going on. And, you know, we were, it was just like complete silence throughout the whole school, which. Oh, my gosh. I can't. You know, I bet. Because what could you say? Yeah. You know? And I mean, a ninth, I was a ninth grader. So it's rare for the entire school to just be. Right. Oh, my gosh. I can't quiet. imagine. Um, and I called, actually, because um, my husband. Um, he and I both went to high school together and um, we weren't like in the same friend circle or knew each other back then, mm -hmm. but his brother um, was in the Marines at the time and he was actually working at the Pentagon the, when on 9-11. Oh my gosh. Yes. And, oh, I'm getting Did chills just thinking about it. Yes. Thank God. But um, that's scary. Knowing know. that he was at the Pentagon. When did you find out he was okay? Um, he said, like, the next um, period, they went over the intercom and said, you know, so-and-so, please come down to the front office. And he's like, Ugh. oh, my gosh, what's going on? You know, like, it kind of slipped his mind for a minute, like, that his brother was there. And they were like, we just wanted to let you know that your family got in contact with your brother and he's okay. Thank God. Oh my God. I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. And I just a, imagine. another little random scary kind of story is remember the shooting at um, Fort Hood? Yes, very much so. That same brother was at Fort Hood, stationed at Fort Hood when that happened. And they were doing like a graduation oh ceremony. So my husband. Yeah. And his little niece and, niece and nephews that were like babies at the time were mm -hmm. there to see him graduate. And, you know, they locked all the doors to all the buildings because there was an active shooter on mm -hmm. site. And so here and my husband is locked in this auditorium with all these families and kids and everybody's just freaking out. Oh, terrifying. Oh my yes. God. So his brother was, you know, experienced. His brother needs to stay in and just not well, do he's, he's his, earned his nine lives are done. Uh, actually, uh, two years ago, he went to work one day and, um, he said his, the morning started off a little weird. He didn't feel right. Like he, he went to drive to work and he said he just felt like cloudy in his head, but he went to work anyways and, you know, works or whatever. And then when he went to leave that day, he couldn't remember how to drive all of a sudden. And so he called his wife and he was like, I'm, I'm scared. Something doesn't seem right. Sounds like, wrong. right. Yeah. He's like, I can't, remember how to tie my boots. I can't remember how to drive. Can, can you come get me? And she's like, I'm on my way. And she was in the, they met in the military. Uh -huh. um, They're both Marines. So she goes and picks him up and they go straight to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. And um, the doctor who was a very old doctor um, said he had never seen this before or once before in his career. And it, they called it like the butterfly effect tumor yes um, okay, I know. yeah yeah Tell it's, what that is it spreads very very fast it starts like i don't know if it, it starts in the front of your brain and just it spreads very fast to the back and it basically makes you go from being the person you are and you regress back into like a child so right. they flew his his mom flew out there as quick as she could and he was calling her mommy and like talking to her as if he was like a, a 10 or 12 year old. Like, and, and this, this happened within 48 hours. Like, and the doctor said, I need y'all to be prepared. This is going to happen very fast. And, you know, next thing you know, he's on life support and he's gone.
Like it oh, just no, he died. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that's so unfair. Yes. Let me ask you: yes. Do you think, you know, was was he in the Pentagon when the plane hit? Yes. Okay, because there was they, they say there was a lot of chemicals released. Correct. Do they think that that might have had something to do with it? See, they thought that, and his family, they're all military men. Like, his other brother is a very high-ranking, um, arm. he's in the Army. Like, he mm -hmm. basically runs the entire base. Um, but, so they had that kind of idea, but the military said that's impossible because, you know, when you're in the service, you're doing physicals constantly, just mm -hmm. constantly, you know, having to make sure you're physically up to par and mentally up to par. So they were doing, they, they said there was, they would have caught that earlier. Or a lot earlier. Right. Mm -hmm. well, you know, I'm a firm believer that horrible stress can lead to horrible illness. And I can imagine the stress he must have felt both days, especially oh, yeah. especially being locked in an auditorium, knowing there's an active shooter. Mm -hmm. oh. With his two babies there. With his two ba exactly. I am so sorry. I am yeah, so sorry uh, that I mean, happened. I bet your brother was, and you were just my devastated. Hus my husband. I mean, your husband, sorry. His yeah, brother. Yeah. Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. It, oh. was, it was hard. It it's was very it was hard. Great. It was it was crazy how, how fast it happened. And at the time when he passed away, his children were like, what, 12 and 10, Sam? Oh, Can just you? the worst possible age. They were the in. Worst. And so I set them down because I had lost my mom at 18, you know, very mm -hmm. young. And I had actually become her legal guardian, had to turn the machines off, was in the room alone with her. So I knew what it was like to lose a parent. So while this funeral is going on, you know, I'm sitting on the bench with these two kids and I'm just trying, I was just telling them, you know, like, look, I know exactly what you're feeling right now. And they needed that, I bet. Oh yeah. And they, I just, you know, told him he's going to be with you forever. And, you know, he's listening, he's still here and good. It, it was hard, but how are they, how are they doing now? How's everybody doing now? They, they're doing okay. Actually, um, mm -hmm. yeah, they're doing good compared to some of the, some of the other nieces and nephews. No, oh, um, I'm so sorry. They are. His daughter has a, uh, just had her first baby, and oh wow, um, the mom just got remarried, and mm -hmm. so and the kids are very very well behaved. I mean, you had two <laughs> marine parents, so yeah, <laughs> they, they better be well behaved <laughs> or else. Exactly. Oh, they are. It, they're <laughs> they're doing very very well. Um, they <laughs> actually. Because of everything he went through, um, they sent the kids to college. They've uh, they've done so much for them. It's when you say they, amazing. who do you mean? Oh, like the military. They okay, they've taken them, care of the, the kids. Then that's uh, good. They should. Hundred percent. A hundred percent. Gave them um, counseling for the mom for them. Um, you know, said so even if it's ten years down the road and this bothers you, call us. Like they. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just amazing what the military has done for them. That it is really wonderful. Is. That really is absolutely is. wonderful. Well, uh, give your husband our our deepest sympathy, and I appreciate you sharing that story. It's very touching and moving and, and sad, but I'm glad you're able to talk to his kids and tell them that dad is still with you, and that's true. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I, I always believe God brings people into your life for a reason. And I had kind of just met him before all that happened. So mm -hmm. there you go. Mm -hmm. well, listen, you take care. And Danny B, I'm glad you called in. I've seen you in chat before. So I'm glad to have you up here on the screen. So feel free to call in anytime. Okay. Thank you for having me. I just, I had to take a break with the whole summer thing going on, you know. I, me too. Yeah, I was just take like, care. okay, I got to disconnect for a little while. Yeah, that's what we're doing tonight <laughs> is we're disconnecting just tonight. Uh, because that's tomorrow why I'm night. Here. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow night, um, uh, the interview room with Chris, they're going to be doing a story about uh, trafficking. And I think that that will be amazing. I would encourage everybody to tune in to that. I know I certainly am. And I'm sure we'll review it on Monday on uh, Web Sleuth's YouTube Live. So thank trafficking you, Danny B. Just in thank the you. Tennessee area or like all over? I'm sorry, what? Trafficking in just the Tennessee area or all over? I'm not sure. I, I would assume 
it will be about uh, trafficking in Tennessee specifically, and then he'll talk about all over too. You know, I would like to know what statistics they have in Tennessee mm -hmm. for human trafficking. And again, human trafficking, the best way to look at it is um, what that means is, uh, it, you know, it's not kidnapping little girls and sending them to Asia. That right. can happen. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but it's mostly runaways who these horrible people get them hooked on drugs and mm -hmm. then they put them out on the street as a sex worker. They know That's how to seek out those vulnerable people. It, they get the most vulnerable people. And you know what they do? They go up to these kids and it's not always, but it's usually a man going up to a young girl and hey baby, I'll take care of you and treats them so nice. And oh my God, they've just come from a horrible situation uh -huh. that they ran away from. And then he gives them drugs that make them feel good and then boom, they're hooked and he becomes a monster and that's it. So have you seen that video going around on YouTube right now of mm -hmm. the um, coyotes crossing the border with these children? No. Oh gosh, Trisha, it's horrible. Um, they show just a real short clip of this. I don't know if it's a news crew or what, but they stumble upon these coyotes and it's way more children than um, adults. And the children look like sedated. They're not just regular Monster. sleeping. So we're t when you say coyote, we're talking about uh, a man that deals in trafficking. And you, a lot of times it's a, they hire a coyote from Mexico to take a family to the U.S. and get them across the border. Many Correct. times they just take their money and drop them off on the Correct. other on the Mexican mm -hmm. side and say, go for it. But these are coyotes coming from the U.S. with kids and going to Mexico? No, they're taking the kids uh, from Mexico, Mexico. to oh, the U.S. Horrible. And see, they had shown a news clip about a couple of months ago when they were first starting to say that our borders, you know, were weak. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a high, it was like CNN or something. It was a, a big time media. Mm -hmm. um, and they were uh, asking the kids, like, why are you without your parents? And asking the coyotes, you know, why do you have kids but not the parents? And they're like, because the parents want the kids to have a better life. And and so I even seen some little babies and they were, you know, screaming for mommy and it broke my heart. Oh, and so, so at the moment fun. I took the word for it. But yeah. then this video came out within the last couple of days. Um, and it was like children, like summer's age and younger, and they were completely sedated so that they didn't cry and, and do try to get away or, or, you know, make noise while they're trying to sneak through the mm -hmm. desert. And oh, it's that's just horrible. Oh, it's disturbing. And even the lady on the taking the video says, these kids are not normally sleeping. They're obviously sedated. Yeah, and I can see see why that is just a horrible monster thing to do. I'll look, I'll find that. I'll look for that and watch that. But AB Watchman has met on his channel. He does. Okay. I'll mm -hmm. go check it out there. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but be sure and watch Chris tomorrow night. That should be oh, just Oh, I will. I'll be there. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, Danny B. You Thank take you, care. Thank you, Trish. You too. Okay, bye-bye now. Okay. Um, let me put up the link. I'm going to put a link up. If you click on it, you can join me in the Web Sleuth Studios. Very high tech. A lot of money and uh, planning went into these studios. Maybe someday, someday when I grow up and am, am, am actually an adult, I will get a real studio. Okay. Oh, I got to say hi to Allison in Facebook. Yay. I kept forgetting like for a week in a row. I felt so horrible. Allison, for some reason, can't get on YouTube chat, so she always joins us every night in Facebook and talking about what Lillian was talking about earlier about the email from Dave. A lot of people have said this, that they feel Dave is really a woman, and that could be that, but who knows? I would really like to meet that person because, honestly, they made me laugh so hard because they were so damn mad at me. It was hilarious. Okay, so... Anyway, um, I'll tell you what, I'll tell one story. I've told this before, but we have a lot of new people. So forgive me 
just think of me as the, the doddering old person retelling the same stories over and over. Oh, wait, before we do that, I want to bring on LC Justice for Victims. Hi, LC Justice for Victims. How are you? Are Hi. you there? Hi, how are you? Just fine. Um, I love your show, first off. Thank you, Thank you my dear. I can and hardly see you. But what you do to, you know, educate everybody with these stories and the, the concepts of the stories. And that's the same thing I'm trying to do is I am trying to listen to each creator and, and educate myself. But I'm also mm -hmm. trying to get subscribers because you got to get 1K just to get up there on broadcast. So. Right. I hope I'm not, not breaking the rules, but please subscribe to me, y'all. I want to do the same thing, y'all, but not steal what's anybody's the, work. What's the name of your channel? It's LC Justice for Victims, everyone. Okay, and the, it's four, the number four, LC Justice, the number four victims. Uh, no problem, my dear. I'm happy to promote, uh, promote? what the heck does that mean? Promote new uh, YouTube people. Everybody needs a little help, and I'm glad to put that out yes, there. So it's I want to make it clear, y'all. I don't. I'm not here to take anybody's work. No, nobody's cases. No. I've been watching cases from all these channels, and you're amazing. Thank so you. yes, I'm not here to steal any. Everybody's work. I know a lot of YouTube channels has been saying that on their channels that people has passed it. information and used each other. I'm not doing that. I want to get my own broadcast someday, but mm -hmm. if I get more subscribers, I can get that door open. Right. And let me tell you, um, LC Justice for Victims, I'll keep saying that so people will remember. Uh, we don't even talk about other channels and their drama because this is the drama free zone. I've had it sprayed. Yes, I appreciate that. I appreciate out. that 100% Good. that you're a drama free. And that is what I want to do to my channel as well is keep it to the subject like mm -hmm. you, to Got the it. perimeter of the case like you, and mm -hmm. to the perspective that some people can have opinions like you always right. say and strategies, but I want to make sure people know I can't get love until I get a hundred subscribers, but I gotcha. am watching you all and you're amazing. Oh, thank you, my dear. Well, did you have a, any 9-11 uh, stories or anything else? No, uh, I mean, this is what I'm doing is like hopping into these streams and trying to get myself out there Good. and stuff and well, just, you know, respect the host that they post that link so I can prop proposition myself without hurting anyone's feelings <laughs> hey, like i said there's here's the thing there's plenty for everybody to get um you know subscribers it doesn't bother me at all it never has uh in fact i'm going to start having youtube creators on to talk about what they do on their channels you know but we like i said we stay away from from the drama so everybody once again it's the initials L C and then justice, the number four and then victims. Thank you, LC. Thank you so much, my darling. We hope you keep coming and back. Thank and thank you in with for us. letting me come on. I appreciate that. You got it, my dear. You take care. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you Bye -bye. again. Okay. LC justice for victims. Okay. Once again, where was I? Uh, yeah. Act like I'm in the daughter, daughtering, old person that keeps retelling the stories. You know how your parents used to make you go visit old people and they kept telling you the same stories over and over? That's me. Okay, so this was uh, a few days after 9-11. And uh, back up. We're watching cartoons, my son and I. And we see, I guess it was Roadrunner and Wile E. Coyote because they always have those bombs, you know, the big round ball with the big long string and they blow up and you know, Wiley Coyote sitting there and he's all black and then he goes to dust, laugh our heads off at it. So um, one day my son, who's just a little bit over five says, Trish, yes, he calls us by our first names. We even tried to bribe him to get him to call us mom and dad. It wouldn't work. Trish, he's got that cute little high voice. If I ever see a bomb, what should I do? And I said, well, find an adult 
well, if, what if an adult's not around? Should I call, call 911? And I said, yeah, you should. And uh, my son reminded me of, of the story. I didn't tell, I don't think I told that part last time because I'd forgotten and he reminded me of it. Anyway, so it was back in the day before we all just had cell phones. Uh, we had a landline and we had a, a two story home and all our bedrooms were on the second floor. And that morning, for some reason, I, I think I was talking to somebody on the landline and it was one of those wireless phones with the cradle. And I had taken it downstairs to our office to talk. And pretty soon I hear, hear Will yelling, it's a bomb, it's a bomb. Where's the phone? I need to call 911. Thank you, Lord, for letting me take that phone downstairs. Because if I hadn't, he was so panicked and so sure that he had found a bomb that he was going to call 911. And he would have said, there's a bomb here. Can you imagine the response that would have showed up at my house a few days after 9-11? I mean, it would, we would have had, you know, police, the sheriff, probably National Guard, you know, CIA, secret jets, uh, B-52s. I mean, Lord knows what would have happened. And I'm like, calm down, calm down. What do you mean a bomb? He goes, there's a bomb. I found him. I found a box of bombs under the sink. Lots of bombs. And he comes down and you know what he has? He had gone into our bathroom and my husband and I each had a sink in the bathroom and they were across from each other. And we had our own little, you know, cupboards and everything. I don't know why, but he'd opened my cupboard. He brings down a box and he pulls out of the box with a big long string, a tampon. Can you imagine the people, the services that would have shown up after 9-11 with some little kid calling saying, there's a bomb in my house. I have a box of bombs. And they get here and they see a tampon. Uh, I said, honey, those aren't bombs. But thank you for being so good and being very safe. But remember, if there's an adult around, talk to the adult before you call 911. And I said, those are personal things for mommy. He goes, you mean for you, Trish? I said, yes, for mom. What are they used for? I, I've always really have been a strong believer, and I'm very serious, a strong believer in being honest with kids, not, you know, giving little goofy names to private parts and if they ask really personal questions just telling them and acting like it's no big deal and that's what i did here and i explained it this way i said will ask your dad i can't remember what his dad told him but it was a satisfactory answer anyway so um let's see what everybody's doing here Hang on. You guys, I got to take this off. It's driving me crazy. I've been wearing it most of the day today, and I feel like one big sweaty roly poly. I feel like I could just roll up in a ball and just start rolling. Okay. <laughs> Lee Vogel says, my mom found me as a toddler tearing up tampons in the bathroom. She asked me what I was doing and I said, I always wondered what these were and I still don't know. <laughs> oh, that cracks me up. Hey, movie star memories and Amber E and Tam Bennett and Jamie Johnson and Anna and Barb Olson and Misty Baker and Black Lab OG. And uh, let's see here. Insightful one, good to see you, Misty Baker. Truck is here, everybody. Persephone's pomegranate, good to see you. Oh, Regal Rabbit, there you go. That's that's how I should have described it. I should have said, honey, that kind of is a bomb. It's a ticking time bomb in women, five to seven days.
So anyway, something else I wanted to tell you. Laura Sinclair, good to see you. 10-9, hi there. Mike is here. Sally W., hi there. Candy Williams. Wendy Grimstead. Denise Spalding. I know, kids, I can, there's so many fun stories I have of Will, and he gets so sick of me telling it. He really hates it when his birthday comes around, and I call him and I repeat the story of his birth. That really makes him mad, because I constantly guilt trip him. <laughs> it doesn't work anymore. So. He actually, I think he thinks I'm funny, which is good. I want him to think I'm funny. Movie Star Memories, thank you. Good to see you. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this. M. Guinea Star, something like that. Rhonda Adams, hi. I'll take a look. Twin Mom 2011, hello. Teresa, cousin, good to see you, my darling. How is everything? I have some really great cousins in my family. I love them, and Teresa's one of them. Oh, uh, Ping, I thought you meant my ex and his lovely wife. I'm like, what? No, uh, Will and his lovely wife, wife, his lovely wife, Helen, his lovely wife, Helen, are doing great. They just moved into a a really cute older Tudor home that's been, was in my family. And, um, and uh, I, I don't even know, I, that's too personal. I don't need to get into that. I was just about to tell you what happened in the divorce. You don't need to know that because it's boring. Anyway, they've moved into this cute little house and they're redecorating it and everything. And um, they're just doing great. I can't wait for them to come visit. But we got to get COVID calmed down. Helen seems really susceptible to COVID, even though she's been vaccinated. She got it, and it made her really sick. So, oh, thank you, Teresa. I hope you're feeling better. We got to talk again. I love it when my cousin Teresa calls me because we just the whole time. And what does mean? That means we talk about politics other family members, gossip, all that stuff. That's the official way of saying it is. Bup, 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 bup. Good night, Benzer22. Good to see you. Oh, I got it right on the pronunciation. I don't think I could ever do it again. Uh, M. Guinea Star. Hi, Jan. Hi, Jan Sharon Housen. Did I get that right? Butterfly Wings, hello. Tia Bennett, Mike, Mama Libra Scales, hi there. Mel Mack, Lee Vogel, Anna, Deanna Bates, Marilyn Landis, Lynn Levy, Insightful One, uh, Monzi Smoke, hi there. Rombo Hedrill, oh, from the Netherlands. I really want to live in the Nether Netherlands, I really do, so. I'm just going to show up one day. Lizard T is in the house, everybody. Sue B is here. Love my Charlie Faith. Hi, Lee Vogel. Just checking through here, making sure. Beth B, good to see you. I love you, Beth B. Stacy G, hello, my darling. Lisa, oh, I'm going to mess this up, so get ready, people. Lisa Lavacki. Yes, we love Canadians. We love the Dutch. We love the English. We love everybody, except I'm not sure about, I don't know. There's a couple of people in outer Mongolia that I'm not too fond of. Good night, PJ. It's good to see you. Oh, is it Lise? Lise? Love a Q? Oh, thank you, Diane Hannah. Thank you.
uh, let's see, Black Lab OG. Let me put this out there. Hey, guys, does anyone know if Christmas wrapping paper is in stores yet? I need to find for work. Anybody has any ideas for Black, ideas, ideas for Black Lab OG? Be sure and put them in chat, okay? Levesque. Ellie Beck. Hi, Blue Moon. Venzer22 says, I married a Dutch man. Best thing ev I ever did. Oh, that's so sweet. Does he have a, have a brother? Cousin? Really old uncle? Tenth, twelfth cousin? I'm not picky. Hi, Trent Voorhees. Good to see you. I'm seeing a lot of guys' names, which is good. I checked our stats a few months ago, and I swear, it was something like 98% women and 2% men. <laughs> oh, uh, Ping the Router, did you get your second uh, COVID shot? Is that what you mean when you say no issues or side effects? That's good. Very good. And... Lise is from Santa Rosa. I love California. I love Canada. Yeah, my son has a part-time job walking dogs in the mountains. And, oh, my God, he loves it. Just loves it. He even, get this, he even takes clients' dogs camping. They go on camping trips together and then, you know, he films them and sends it back to mom and they just have a great time. I'm, I am so proud of that kid. I love him. He is, I, I always figured if I could teach compassion, if I could get my child to be compassionate, everything kind of falls into place in my book, you know? So if you become a successful business person, you need compassion if you have employees need to make sure you're being fair to them, that type of thing. Yeah, I told you, I'm a one of those bleeding heart liberals that you just want to smack. And I raised him that way. Although, you know, we took him to like protests and things like that when he was a little kid and made little signs for him and people took pictures. He was in magazines and everything. And we just, what we told him was there was always, an, uh, there were always other sides to, to uh, the, the discussion where we might feel this way, other people feel this way, and we'd always do that. And um, he grew up to be a very independent thinking person. How do I know this? Well, because we made it very clear that we were not gun people, that uh, we didn't like guns in the house. We certainly weren't hunters. That was our opinion. And he then pretty much now is a gunsmith, knows every type of gun, knows how to fix it. Um, he just went all in for guns. And if we'd never said a word, I don't think he would have done that. But the good news is he's very safe, and I am thrilled with that. Um, and I told you for Mother's Day, he got me something so sweet and frilly, he got me a gun, a handgun. So, like I said, I love that kid. I'm more of a gun person now because of him and the way I've seen how responsible he is. So. Wow, Marilyn Landis says, my daughter is an autoimmune doctor. I bet she is busy. Oh, Barb Olson. Oh, my gosh. I got to put this up in, uh, in the room here. Hold on. Let me find you. Let me find you here. Where are you here? There you are. I'll read it. Speaking of compassion, I remember when Lacey Peterson went missing, my five-year-old son wants to send his piggyback money to find her. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. I took my son on with me, son with me on a, a little hike for Elizabeth Smart. You know, he was all into it. He's taking pictures and looking for the suspects. And it was fun. Not fun because Elizabeth, it wasn't fun because Elizabeth was missing, but it was fun to watch him just get all into it and, and be all worried. 
and when fun wasn't the right word, um, I was glad to see him become so concerned, like your son, Barb. That is so sweet. Is Gray Hughes here? Where is he? <laughs> Gray Hughes said, Gray Hughes investigates says, wow, you're going to be a Republican soon. Woohoo. Yes, I'm living in Texas and I like guns now. It's, yeah, I don't think that'll happen, but it's getting closer. <laughs> Oh, Gray Hughes, you are so sweet. What a sweetheart. Man, I want to get rich so I can do, Not, I'm not saying you're rich, but I would like to be able to show up and just like um, give tons of money to my favorite YouTubers. Gray Hughes investigates. Thank you so much for the super chat and says, don't forget to support your favorite YouTube channels. They spend a lot of time. Woohoo. So what you need to do, my darling true crime angels, is you need to go to uh, Gray Hughes Investigates and hit that subscribe button, hit the uh, thumbs up button, and donate if you can. Because if anybody puts in a lot of work, it is Gray Hughes. It is, you watch his channel, whether you agree with him or not, you see the work he does with the maps and how he outlines like timelines. It really is amazing. And He's brilliant. He really is. Don't tell him I said that. He'll get a big head. So. Levi Page is here. Hi, Robin Swan. Hey, uh, let me put the link up in chat again, everybody. And uh, do, do, do. Levi and Gray and anybody else, if you'd like to click on this link and join me in the studio live to talk about where you were on 9-11, that would be great. We would love to talk to you. So Levi or Gray or anybody else. <laughs> Gray. <laughs> Wait, I left for a bit. Can you say that again? <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, definitely, uh, I have found these guys. I didn't like find them on the street corner, but they have a big shooting range and they run a gun store and they have shooting classes. I guess the law now in Texas is they do have an open carry. I'm not talking about alcohol. I'm talking about guns. What that means is if you have a gun on you, open carry means you have to show it. Like if you have a sweater on and it's on your belt, you have to put your sweater behind it so people know you have a gun. I tried to staple my gun right here to my forehead. I couldn't do it. But yeah, you have to show it, okay? Now, to get what I want to carry it in my purse so I can point my purse at the bad guys, I have to get a concealed carry, and that's a little different, which is good. They make you go through training and practice shooting, which is exactly what I need because guns just still terrify me. Oh, thank you, Lise. I hope I'm saying your name right, Lise. And I can't use this arm anymore because once I start wiggling it around and I set it down, it's like, ow, ow. Hi, Shimpy. Good to see you. Yeah, Gray Hughes is kicking with his material. I agree. He's kicking butt. Oh, no, Monica M. I'm so sorry. 
uh, Monica M says, my ex-boyfriend passed away in a car accident and I was at his funeral on 9-11. Oh, look who it is. It's Mr. Wonderful. Here we go. Hey, <laughs> how are you, darling? <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> it's going good. Thank you for that super chat. That was so kind. And for oh. jumping in here, we love having you here. Levi, come on, jump on. I'll well, put I, don't get, I don't get to see you as much because it seems like we're kind of almost in a similar time frame now or something. Yeah. I don't see you as much. So I um I do this every other Saturday. I do a true crime story. Basically, I'm totally ripping off um uh Bailey. Oh my gosh, I just forgot her last name. Baby uh, Bailey Saren and uh Mr. Ballin. Uh, they do the same thing, except Bailey puts on makeup while she tells her story. So I and I love listening to them. So I thought I'm gonna try it, see how it works. So what's new with you? What's going on on your show? Ah, well, you know, I, I've been using I use Stream or OBS Studio. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, not that this is just totally technical here, but you know, you know how you can feature chats on Stream Yards, like you can click on a chat and it shows. Right. Up. Yeah, I just really? did it with yours. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. They this person wrote a plugin for Chrome, and you you know, like the regular plugins you can get for Chrome, you just click on it. And now when you go to um, your, you're, run, you're doing your show on YouTube, in the chat that you can pop out, it puts this little window down there. And then you just have to put it into OBS Studios. You can click on it and it does exactly the same thing. Really? That was one of the things I was always like, oh, man, I got to get StreamYards is so cool that it could do that. It is cool. I love it. I, I love it. StreamYards is so easy. The fact that cool. I can even do it is amazing, you know. Cause I'm not technical at all, but you always do fun stuff. I love it when your um, people put you in jail. Now that's when you say something mean and somebody puts yeah. you in jail, right? Yeah. But now I have the ability to put, because of that thing, I just told you to pop out. I made mm -hmm. it really big where it puts their, uh, their icon in the jail. Oh, cool. Like if, like if somebody else says something and I put them in jail. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. Yeah. That yeah, is oh, <laughs> look who's here. Oh my God. And I think he's live. I thought he was just a zombie. Everybody, please welcome for the very first time live and in person. Levi Page, how are you? Hey, Trisha. This is That's who I really time. wanted to show you. Yeah. That's oh, was that your kitty? <gasps> my God, he looks he looks just like Boo. Uh, did you see? <laughs> he acts just like Boo. <laughs> Gray, I don't know if you've ever seen my black cat, but he always jumps in my lap while I'm trying to do my show. And Levi has a cat exactly like him. <laughs> oh my gosh, he's beautiful. Well, okay, I've got like two incredible true crime people in this uh, in this chat right now, and I am thrilled. So don't go anywhere because I have questions, people. I have questions. Okay, so Levi, tell me what's new with you and Alex and Crime and Scandal. <laughs> Well, uh, my cat's attacking me. Probably not a good idea to put the camera on. Have you oh, come on. Put the camera on. Um, Let's draw some blood. <laughs> so we are, we've been covering the Murdoch case. I don't know if you've been covering that, Gray. I'd be interested to hear what oh, you yeah. think yeah. about that case in South Carolina. Well, we've been covering it so you... well, once they went, well, you know, once the murders of Paul and Maggie, that's the day I started covering it. And then, and then, mm -hmm. and then it goes, then you go back in time to look at Mallory beach. And then this recent shooting, I think is totally bogus. Like, Oh yeah. It, I think it, it, completely, it's completely bogus. The shooting of himself. Uh, I actually think he's, he's been a prosecutor. So what he did was he off site, he pulled up a car similar to what he was going to later claim and then shot at his vehicle like eight times, then took some shells, drove out there, made an injury on his head somehow, and then he throws his shells on the ground, and now the forensic information lines up with a car pulling up next to him. See? Right. So he, he can say, yeah. he can say, look, the person that killed my son and my wife, they tried to kill me. Yeah, yeah. So he didn't do that. See, that's one, one of the problems that I've been mentioning is, like, Wow, that's true. Wouldn't he? The first thing he would say when he woke up in the hospital would be this, right? He'd go, Man, I hope you guys catch the person who shot at me. And then I hope you guys, uh, you know, maybe that'll lead to the sh killer of my son and my wife. Instead, he said, Well, everybody, I'm checking into rehab and I've resigned 
from my law office. Like, wow. I mean, yeah, where did that come from? Yeah, like, well, aren't you going to talk about what happened to your... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Well, here's what I think. I think he's going to claim that he was high on opiates when it comes out that he shot himself somehow, some way. And he's going to blame it on that. Yeah, he wants, that's why he's introducing the opioids and that he's going into rehab. But I, I wouldn't doubt it that that's completely bogus, too. Yeah, although, yeah. Although, although one news outlet said that they were able to verify that he was having an opiate problem. But what was the verification? Was it he said it to somebody? Right. He's clever. He's been a prosecutor. He knows exactly what he, you know. So. Exactly. So, but do you think he is a possibility of a suspect in his wife and murders and wife and son's murder? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. he, I think his wife was probably going to divorce him. I think he was seeing somebody else. He was going to, get divorced and she probably knew about some of the embezzling that he was doing from and something happened and then I think Timmy or Paul like we call him Timmy because he's that's what they call him as a nickname mm -hmm. I think it might be from South Park I guess but they call him Timmy, oh, Timmy from South Park why that's not a that's not a compliment <laughs> at all <laughs> well yeah well he turns into a absolute monster when he drinks and I, I just think he's a I don't have any sympathy whatsoever for his death i don't know why it is i just don't care at all mm -hmm. i care that maggie died but his death right. just i mean he's a freaking nightmare right you're talking about that uh, paul the kid yeah or the 19 year old paul aka timmy yeah yeah he was he was a spoiled awful brat yeah exactly no question <laughs> levi what are your thoughts well, I don't know if you've heard the latest, but it's been reported that Alex Murdoff is saying that he actually conversed with this sh shooter, this unknown person that shot him, allegedly. Mm. He's saying that he was, you know, having trouble with his tire. This guy in a pickup truck pulled up. He asked him if he was having car problems. They talked and then he shot him. Damn. I, if you get a chance, uh, watch my know. show last Wednesday when I had Joseph Scott Morgan on. He explained beautifully how he could have made that head wound, head wound himself. Yeah, put it right next to the head. I would just go like this. Yeah. If I was going to do it, I'd put it right next to it at an angle where it can't possibly go into your right. head and it just graze it. They're yeah. claiming, his lawyers are claiming that it went inside the head and then an exit wound and it actually gave him brain like uh some kind of damage a little bit there i know some they, wouldn't, well. they said it they was, wouldn't let him out after two days or whatever it was if it was that serious right you know yeah. and they actually said it was a superficial wound law enforcement did yeah and he got life flight for that yeah ex exactly the whole thing is there's something it doesn't it's make nuts it. hey levi where did your face go yeah <laughs> i took it off levi <laughs> i don't know if you want to you look great. <laughs> you look you look wonderful. I'm not in front of my computer. Okay, okay. The one thing people always ask is like, hey, are you gonna do another video? Well, no, I don't do videos really hardly ever. I do live shows where we just kind of go over stuff, just like you do, right? Like you don't right. make a video on the Murdochs, you do like a two hour, three hour show where you're right. talking about, it, right? But uh, what I what I love about what you do, Gray, is you do like make these great maps and you show people uh exactly like where the killer would have come from you know where the bullet went from I, it's it's great and levi and alex make such a great pair i mean again there's plenty of subscribers to go around for all of us and i think the good youtubers the ones that don't deal in the drama and the crap we kind of need to stick together so yeah. do you want to see the uh i made this little map of where uh stephen smith was shot can you put it up? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me do this. Hold on. Let me see if I can get you bigger here. Yeah, I, I've got my uh, there you my are. screens here in a second. But my, I'll just go like this. Like this. And then I've okay, got, that's good. Hold on a second. Yeah, so Stephen Smith. Yeah, so I've got this whole thing mapped out here. He now, is, now who tell us who Stephen Smith is again? Stephen Smith was uh, in 2015. He was found dead on the side in the middle of a road, and 
at first they said that it was a gunshot wound and then it's just really suspicious uh, narr narrative going on where they switched mm -hmm. it to a hit and run but there was never any glass or anything like that found on the road so it just doesn't make a lot of sense at all mm -hmm. uh, although there isn't an, i never heard that there was an exit wound and they weren't able to find a bullet so i'm not sure how to reconcile that but uh you know he was at school night school way over here at oc tech about okay. a, yeah, probably an hour drive and then he drove back this was back in 2015 i think june 8th i, I think mm -hmm. i can't remember exactly but he drove all the way to here and then his car was found right there okay and then apparently he walked this route right here because he's trying to get home he lived right here see how that road it actually goes right he's heading right the way home and then right here he was shot on the road and i actually took their diagram and put it right on the ground there wow so that's how he was found on the ground um and he had a, a hole in his head uh, nobody his whole family doesn't think it was a hit and run and then there was something like nine times in the investigation of this the murdochs were brought up yeah that's a that connection how are they connected how what how did that happen well, maybe, you know? they, well they say buster uh what they well here's the thing um stephen smith told his mother that he was in a relationship with a family member of a high profile family. Ah, uh, okay. And it turns out that was probably Buster. And that's the other son. Yeah, the other son. <laughs> you know, it's just the other this one. whole thing is crazy, man. Mm -hmm. you know, well, that, you know, it could be, if, if true, it sounds like uh, the way they handle things is they just get rid of the people that uh, cause them a, a problem, you know? But are, so have they reopened Stephen Smith at all? Oh, yeah. They opened it right after right after the shooting, actually, during really? the investigation of the shooting of Paul mm -hmm. and Maggie. It led them to go wait, We need to relook at this again, mm -hmm. which is crazy. That means something in the investigation of Paul and Maggie led them back to Stephen Smith. Well, I'm glad they're keeping on it. And, that, and Trisha, um, his shoes were like barely on him. Which to yeah. me that would indicate that he was being dragged, and you know you, when you drag people, you have them by their feet. Right, and his shoes were probably coming off. Oh my God! Well, mm. I'm glad to see that the prosecutor isn't letting up just because they're a high-profile legal family. That's that's, and the investigation isn't letting up. Well, they I'm, can't well, now. Everybody's watching. Before, well, that's true. Nobody was watching. Nobody had heard nationally of. Mallory Beach's death or mm -hmm. Stephen yeah. Smith's death. Right. Now that the national attention is on them, they can't cover it up. It's, That's so weird. it's weird how on like on YouTube the true crime community is still just absolutely focused in on Summer Wells. But like we've been covering this one too. Mm -hmm. And it's just weird how it hasn't really picked up, but I can see it's starting to pick up a little steam and then I guarantee mm -hmm. it all these same people because it's like I look at YouTubers a lot of times as the gold rush. Like how it used to be a long time yes. ago where it was like, Absolutely. there's gold in them there hills. And all these uh -huh. people run to the, the summer well stream to fish gold out of the water, right? Or, you know, to pan it out. Exactly. And then even well, I don't when, even like to cover summer wells. Even the, that's horrible yeah. to say because it's a tragic case. She deserves to be found. Yeah. But all these YouTubers have like enmeshed themselves into the lives of this family. And it's kind of gross. Yeah, it is kind of weird, some of the stuff that's going on. I just, I'll cover something when there's something new or I come up with a different idea to look at. Mm -hmm. or but it's just, it's to the point where there's these, all these new YouTubers pop up really quick and they're just in the gold mining to try to get that big pan of gold, right? And then they'll keep panning out of that stream until every last morsel, that's, it's just like Chris Watts. That's yes. That case was solved three days in, right? Right. And then it's like, these people are like, no, 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 we got all this footage. Let's just keep panning out of this stream for years. Years, they're literally. Trading. Yeah, they're still doing videos on Chris Watts. The case was solved. It's not, uh, you know. And whether or not his mistress was involved. Yeah, that's the oh, big yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, that's how you God. keep it going, right? You yeah. come up with a wild conspiracy theory. Yeah. And then you, you just keep, that way you keep your, your audience engaged. Uh, I don't, you know. Man, well, there was even crazy. a nut case that had like, followed some woman at the supermarket and said that it was Nicole Kessinger and took pictures of her 
and then put him out on his YouTube channel. Oh my like, god! Really? You're a stalker. That is <laughs> that's not, horrible. That's oh, not god. content creation. That's stalking. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. stalking. And what it comes down to is the people watching that need to be the ones that say, "Hey, this is crap." But instead, right. like, great work. You know, Cindy. Hey, X. I don't. You know, I'm just making up a name. Hey, that's excellent. Can't wait for some more content. You know. Uh, wow. I know. I know. It it is sad. I mean, because it's, it's kind of like the whole topic that you guys were engaged in regarding. Um, I can't remember what's the name of the one on the elevator. The girl that was. Oh, Lisa Lamb. Yeah, I remember the whole yes. that yeah. controversy that came from that. Yes. It's like it seems like people would just evolve into real true crime. I mean, that's what you do because you have right. press on. You're talking about cases. You're going through them. You know, it's right. Exactly. That, I. I I don't understand it. I, I, I don't. Yeah. I'm not trying to be like all negative Nancy, but. That no, that's crazy. okay. Well, they blamed you, Tricia. They blamed web sleuths. For oh, they always blame web sleuths for everything. Whether we have anything to do with anything or not, we always get blamed nonstop. Yeah. Well, I'll start uh, blaming Reddit. You'll start blaming who? Reddit instead. Reddit. Good. Do. <laughs> Please. I, yeah, oh man, <laughs> they come up with these, they have like all these threads and posts just on me of completely bogus information and uh, Reddit's people, crazy. Yeah. I told my I told my son I said do not look up your mother on Reddit. <laughs> and of course, the, that's the first thing he does. It kind he kind of thinks it's cool. I'm like it's yeah. not cool. Well, you know, I was on Reddit and they were blaming certain YouTubers for Abby and Libby's murder. Oh yeah, oh, that's, God, that's, that's so the exact awesome. case that I was going to talk. That's what I I cover Abby and Libby every Sunday. Yeah, I was doing call-in shows just to keep it going, but I'm not I'm not doing it anymore. These guys, man, they they make it just absolutely not something I'm interested in doing. They're vicious, yeah. But yeah, it's just horrible. Yeah, it's, it is. Hey, well, on that happy note, gentlemen, <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's okay. getting kind of late. Right. Uh, give give you guys the last word. Uh, Gray, tell us when your next uh, live is and what you'll be doing if you know. Well, I actually have this other channel called So Mean Allegedly with this. I, uh, I love that with the Chasing Truth lady. Yeah, with Chasing Truth. And we're going to be actually we're starting we're going to go over the entire. Um, uh, we're, we're starting to cover together the same way that we've been doing it. The um, the Murdoch case. Oh, yeah. that's great. When are you going to do you know what do you know when that's going to be? Well, tomorrow is going to be our first, you know, we're going to do the kind of go over a uh, general, just it in general, and then start from the very beginning and go over every single little piece. But I do want to say something about, uh, you know, like 9-11. Sure. On my show earlier, I had people write in what they remember. So we read through Mm -hmm. them all. That was really touching to see how so many people thought the same, you know, you feel the same, you know, you're like, you remember exactly what you were doing. I remember my mom woke me up from bed. I, she goes, "Gray, a plane hit the building." And I was like, "Oh wow!" We were just talking. And I thought that's kind of weird. How would a plane, you know? And then you uh, hang up, and then you're just watching the news, and then boom, that other plane. And right then you get this crazy. I mean, right now I'm getting that weird chill. You get like, that horrible. I got a horrible yeah. sick feeling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, but you get that like, oh, that feeling of right at that moment where you knew right then everything's changed everything's forever. Different. And then you started have the other planes were started to hit, you know, that hit the Pentagon and then the shanks. Then you didn't know what was going on. Everybody was very fearful. And they it grounded was the planes. And it was amazing how close, I mean, I felt closer to family and friends than I ever had at that time. Right. Well, everybody came together, Yeah. you know, and then it just kind of all fell apart. But um, <laughs> yeah. I, anyway. I want, I want to go watch your, your show. Cause I knew you were doing that and I'm real, uh, I, I, I think it'll be a great, a great read, especially in chat, and to listen to you, and um, yeah, I mean, everybody 10, knows. Ten tomorrow, ten my time tomorrow. So maybe like one Eastern on that. So mean. Is that, oh, so mean. Okay. Well, on that one, but tonight. Oh, I thought you were talking about. Okay, but tonight, yeah, you got to go listen to because I was read all of them. It was almost it was cathartic, really, because you hear all these people's thoughts on how what happened to them. Even right. somebody had a family member die in the building. It was like God. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's terrible. This sucks. Levi, what, uh, any thoughts on 9-11? Do you remember where you were? Yes, I was like, I was not in high school yet. I think I was like in seventh grade. Mm-hmm. 
And um, I was he's in a gym punk. class. He's a young punk. <laughs> 31 is not that very young. You're a young punk. That's, pretty young. That's pretty young. Well, you know, my 17 uh, year old uh, cousin called me middle aged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, anyways, uh, I was in school and I, I was in gym class. And the only reason that any of the students that heard about it is because one of the class, one of my classmates had been at the dentist and saw it on TV and came back and told us what happened. I think all the teachers and faculty knew, but they didn't tell us because they didn't want to upset us. But I remember right. being in gym class, finding out about it. So did they let you watch it on TV or? No, no. Really? Nope. How, did you know anybody? I did not see it until I got home and uh, my grandparents were watching it. Wow. But what about I, you? Oh, go ahead. You can ask. Your... Oh, no, I was just going to ask one more question. Um, uh, did, did you realize even at that young age that your life was going to change? No. No, I was like 12. Yeah. I didn't really understand it that much. But I remember in the years after, you know, when we went into Afghanistan and then invaded Iraq. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. And then you realize, you know, it's changed. And then when you get into college, I mean, I like so many people I went to school with actually went over there and fought in the middle right. of after 9-11. Scary. Mm -hmm. I was uh, telling the people here in chat tonight, I, I knew of, I had been introduced to two people that were I, very close to, uh, people that were close to me. Uh, my husband's uh, business partner, um, I had met his family, his mom and dad and sister, and his sister was on the, the fidelity floor. And um, they didn't find anything of her except her driver's license, which was in perfect condition. And then uh, on the Pentagon plane, my sister-in-law's uh, really good friends and I met them at the wedding. I think I may have met them at other gatherings. It was a husband and wife and two little girls and they died. And I, it, yeah. I, I remember that happening and thinking, how did this happen? How did they get control of all of those planes? The thing is today, somebody stood up with a, with a knife, they just get tackled and pummeled to death. That changes a lot of stuff. It has. There's actually a, an F, a woman that was in the FBI back then who had actually was monitoring and saw that there was these Middle Eastern men that were um, flying at learning how to fly plane, fly. not fly, land, not land or take off or anything. And she actually reported that to somebody, but never right. made it up higher. God, how stupid. I mean, are you kidding? That, I mean, my God, well, whatever, but you know, they, crazy. Those 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 kind of psychos like that is basically like a, a psycho cult. Um, they they'll come up with a way to do something no matter what. I know that the the thing is they're very patient and they'll plan for years and that's what scares me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Trisha, I remember after nine eleven <laughs> um, because I actually grew up near Fort Campbell, which is an army base. Mm -hmm. it, um, it's in Kentucky, but most of it is actually in Tennessee. And there's also a power plant nearby. And I remember like people were on edge thinking that they would maybe attack the army base or something like that after 9-11 right. too. Yeah. And that was a very real concern. You know, uh, I, I always worry and I don't even want to put it out there, but I always worry there's going to be another attack uh, more specific, but we'll hopefully our, hopefully enough people are on top of it that we can prevent these cells that are here. Well, we didn't even, you know, lock cockpits back then. No, we got, we you now. could go visit a cockpit. I remember taking my son up there and they let him look inside when he was five or four, yeah. you know, they, yeah, it's amazing what they do now. And that, and, same, that um, same mechanism is what caused that one plane crash and where you couldn't get into the cockpit to get that one pilot out that flew the plane into a, a, a mountain. Remember that? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It was the, one, the guy in, in, Germany or Germany, where was it? Yeah, that was just, oh God. That was awful. Oh, great, thank you. So <laughs> if I have you on every night, will you give me a donation? Oh, sure. <laughs> anyways, anyways, thanks, thanks for having me on. Thanks guys, I really appreciate it. Everybody, we'll see you Monday night. Don't forget, we'll have the L Mom on and do all kinds of things and be sure and check out Dre Hughes Investigates, an incredible channel and also 
Gray, you're so mean, I think is the name of the other channel. <laughs> That's hilarious. That I love it. I love it. <laughs> hey, Trish, I just want to say that on one of my shows coming up, mm -hmm. I am going to cover a cold case that is 41 years old. And uh, there's wow. been DNA testing that's been done in that case. And I'm going to talk about that. Wonderful. When is mm -hmm. your next uh, show coming up? Monday. 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 Just go to youtube.com forward slash Levi page TV. All right. And that's you. And we need to get you on Trisha. Anytime. That's you and Alexandra Goddard, right? Yes. Alex joins me. Now, do you usually go on Fridays? It just depends. <laughs> Cause I'm free now, on Friday. I have to, go, I have to work in the office. I had been working from home. Now I have to go into the office. Well, that sucks. Yeah. So I don't get to do as many shows as I want, but well, you, uh, you I just tell me, go on two to three times a week. You just tell me Fridays I'm off all the time okay. and every other Saturday. But if you want to have me on, I can rearrange my, my show and we can uh, just, just do it that way. Okay. Or I could just take over web sleuths. You can just take over. I wish yeah. somebody would. For God's sake. <laughs> <I do. laughs> Thanks you Levi. Think? You know, I love you. <laughs> right, take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, what a treat. I mean, really, I love those guys. They're great. Even though Gray and I don't agree on anything. Hardly. We usually agree on true crime, but uh, anyway, let's see what's going on in live chat, everybody. Yeah, and I will put Levi Page and Gray Hughes, both of his links, in our description here in just a little bit, okay? Okay, uh, tomorrow night, don't forget that uh, Chris Madonna from the interview room is going to have a live stream talking about trafficking. So it should be very, very interesting. And be sure and check out Gray Hughes. Well, like I said, I'll put his link in the description you can click on that and join his channel and uh the name of levi's channel is crime and scandal and it's with alex goddard as well everybody in chat insightful one love and coco ping if i missed any mods i apologize everybody thank you for the super chats and thank you for joining and thank you for participating and giving me a thumbs up or a thumbs down okay and on monday We'll be back here live again. The L mom will come in for the second half of the show to discuss Daybell and the LDS church and what Chad and Lori did by taking parts of their LDS beliefs and just twisting them around. That's all coming up on Monday, my darling true crime angels. Be safe, wear your mask, get your shot, and I love you guys. Okay, take care. I'm going to end it right now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.